I really like my XPS 15. Problem is, it's a bit too big and heavy. Now, they do have an XPS 13, which is also fantastic, but it's a little bit too small. My hands fall off the edge, kind of sucks. If only there was an XPS 14. Well, there sort of is. It's under their precision line, so uh, it's really expensive, but this looks like it could be really good. Let's have a look here. Welcome to Dell, let's do great things together. All right, I'll put you aside for a second. We've got our power cord. USB type C charger, love to see it. I uh, went on vacation a week ago and forgot my laptop charger, but I could just charge it using my phone charger and everything was fine. This one right here is rated for 130 watts, not bad. The typical Dell dongle. Uh, I don't love that having a dongle is something that you need to do, but at the same time, HDMI, USB type A, it's easy to just chuck in your bag. I do actually use this a lot. All right. That, uh, this sure looks like an XPS, but like a kind of chunky one. How's, how's the thickness? It's like maybe two millimeters thicker. Oh, maybe one. For IO, we have Thunderbolt on each side, two of them there, as well as a mini SD slot, Kensington lock, and oh, excellent. We also have a headphone microphone combo jack. Uh, can't take that for granted from Dell these days. Oh, for this one though, they did do away with the diamond cut finish. So you can see that it, over here, it has kind of that like, I guess anodized, maybe sandblasted kind of look there. Whereas on the XPS, it's all nice and shiny. Also, this unfortunately does not have D-Brand skins, but also D-Brand won't sell you a Scorpion. So uh, why would you use anything else anyway? 3.6 pounds, not too bad compared to the XPS 15, which is 4.3. Nice little savings. Aside from that, it is laptop. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Now, interestingly, on the touchpad, we have um, something. Uh, I do sort of wish that they were a bit more clear about what it could do. Instead, I'm just gonna take it off and probably never get use of. Oh, it's an NFC reader. I wonder if you're able to use that for like smart cards or authentication stuff. This is a professional laptop being from the precision line. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of like card that you can just tap right there to lock and unlock it more securely than like your fingerprint. Wow, this is a nice display. Do you have the specs for this thing? Is it is it OLED? It looks like it's OLED. The display, although I thought for a second it was OLED because it looks fantastic, is actually WLED and it's 16 by 10, 2560 by 1600. That's a really nice resolution for a laptop of this size. One of my biggest complaints about the XPS 13 Plus was that your screen options were 1080p, which is not quite enough pixel density, or 4K, which is more pixel density than you need and just destroys your battery life. This is a very nice in-between. This must be brutally expensive. I remember even like pretty expensive business laptops had just trash displays even a couple years ago. This is far from that. This is an incredible display. As for performance, I think we have quite a bit. Yep. All right, i9-12900H, 14 cores, 20 threads. We also have 32 gigabytes of RAM at 5,200 mega transfers per second. That makes me suspect that you're not able to swap it, but also it is of a higher speed than what you can have in the slottable modules. Dell's actually working on a thing so you can have faster RAM in your laptops. It's like a weird socketed thing. I forget what they call it, but hopefully that comes to actual consumer devices pretty soon because I really want to try it. We also have one terabyte of RAM and an NVIDIA RTX A1000. So that's a Quadro, but they stopped calling it a Quadro, even though Quadro has really good brand recognition and everybody just calls the new A1000 or whatever Quadros. This does only have four gigabytes of dedicated GPU memory, which is kind of too bad. I'm guessing this thing is very slow. Let's find out what it is. Oh my God. Microsoft, go away. I do not want you to get all of my data. 
All right, just looked it up. So the A1000 is the same die, the GA107, as the RTX 3050. It is a little bit slower though. It has, okay, it has the same number of CUDA cores as the RTX 3050 on the desktop. Effectively, it's a 3050, but slightly slower and way more expensive. It is very nice if you are a professional because you can do very cool things like uh, run SolidWorks and the drivers work properly. SolidWorks could probably make the drivers work properly on GeForce, but uh, they don't. <laughs> All right, well, we get some things downloaded. Let's have a look at this keyboard. Okay, the keyboard is fantastic. I was having a little bit of trouble because I was kind of getting like uncanny valleyed for a second. It is very, very close to the XPS 15 that I use every single day and know the keys like perfectly. Although, oh wait, hmm, hmm, <laughs> that's why I didn't quite like it. Compared to this right here, you can see a little bit, but it's way, way less. Now, this right here is the sort of thing that is very acceptable. That is excellent keyboard flex. But when you have the same switches on two chassis and one of them you use literally every single day, you're gonna notice those little tiny things. Let's get this back. Why is there so much dirt over here? Now, below the keyboard, we also have a trackpad. It's great. It's, I wish it was a little bit larger. It feels like they took the same unit off of the old XPS 13 and just chucked it in here and like, all right, we're good. Which isn't all that bad. It's a fantastic little trackpad. I just wish it was a tiny bit bigger. Oh, it has fingerprint and power button. Oh yeah, it does. Does it have facial recognition though? Okay, I can't seem to set up facial recognition, but Bell tells me it has it. So if it doesn't, he's the one that's wrong. <laughs> and you know what's also wrong? Segwaying into a sponsor like this. Grammarly. <laughs> Thanks to Grammarly for sponsoring this video. Communicating online through email, Slack, or Discord can be easily misinterpreted and can become a huge time block. This is why all working professionals need a tool like Grammarly. Grammarly provides comprehensive spelling and grammar suggestions and ensures your writing is mistake free. Simply install the free desktop app, log in, and start typing. There's also a Grammarly Premium, which provides more in-depth feedback on your writing, such as tone transformations to adjust your tone and to sound more confident. You'll save time with their Clarity Full Sentence Rewrite feature, which helps you rephrase hard to read sentences so you come across more clear and confident. Work smarter, not harder. Go to grammarly.com slash short circuit to sign up for a free account and get 25% off Grammarly Premium today so you can save time and work more effectively. I know that I should probably be installing like SolidWorks and showing you that that works well, but it's, it's gonna be fine. It's a 3050, except with certified drivers. It's gonna work great. And now it's installed. Thank you, Intel Wi-Fi 6E. The AX211 is legitimately the best Wi-Fi chip that exists. <laughs> oh, one thing that I just noticed, um, the pixel response times on this display are not great. I don't know if you can see the trails here. Yeah, this is so much faster. I don't know if you can tell there, but like my movements on this display just feel night and day different latency wise compared to this one. It feels like I'm playing this drunk. Turns out 30 FPS and super high input latency is not the best gaming experience Ugh, you can have. All right, let's turn the resolution down a bit. All right, how's 1080p? This is playable right here, 40, 45 FPS. I can deal with this. I mean, look here, the graphics are good. I can turn those down a bit, actually. Oh, 69 FPS, wow. Okay, this actually, this is running great. You could totally play games on this laptop if you wanted to. So uh, if you're trying to, you know, get a nice, fairly thin and light laptop and your work is paying for it, you wanna play games on the side? This is quite a good option. You're not gonna be like competitively playing stuff, but I could 100%, oh, I, like I just hit that deer. It, you could totally play Valheim. This would be totally fine. This is a fantastic looking display though. We'll, we'll just pop up some crab rave here. It seems like it does not have the Waves audio control panel 
on this like it does on the XPS, which is great because it just breaks all the time and makes your stuff sound terrible. Okay, solid start, solid start. Might be a bit tinny. Not bad, not bad. All right. Oh, that sounds way worse now. It's not bad though. Like, it's not as good as the XPS 15, but also like, look at it. They have this much space for the speakers here, that much there, like it's half as much speaker space. Of course it's gonna be better. Like, not bad though, especially for like professional devices. That's another thing. For whatever reason, professional devices just had tier speakers for so long. It's like, yeah, a, professionals listen to music too. Like, you don't only have to use Excel. Oh, speaking of which though, this is a professional device. It has Intel V Pro. Do you know what that does? I don't really, it, there's some security features that it adds. It's way more expensive. I think the biggest thing that it does is it allows for it to be more easily set up by like network and system admins. Realistically, you are never going to care about the Intel V Pro, but your network manager will. He will thank you. <laughs> All right, let's see about the webcam. That's more cropped than I thought. I feel like most webcams are further out than that. One sec. Maybe I'm just being dumb. Oh my God. As you might've noticed there, my XPS 15 had to wake up from hibernation after I closed it because every single time that I close the lid, it has to hibernate. The reason for that is Windows Modern Standby. Basically, it means that if you just have your normal sleep settings on occasion because your computer tries to like it still runs the CPU, it still connects to the internet so you can like receive your messages and stuff. I don't want that on my laptop. I wanna just simply go to sleep and not kill the battery when I leave it in my backpack. Okay, I was correct though. <laughs> the, this is way more cropped in than most webcams. I'm, I'm like way closer and I also just look way better. It seems like the Precision 5470 has a great webcam. This looks really good, honestly. Is it 1080p? I kind of assumed that it would just have the exact same sensor as is on the XPS 15, it looks like it. But whatever they've done, it's way better. Like just the colors of my face, I look like, I don't know, someone that is a person as opposed to like half dead on the XPS. Like <laughs> just just stuff like, I don't know, that like my skin kind of looks like skin instead of being like sort of blown out and then sort of dark and kind of looking like, yeah, this, this is just way better. <laughs> It's 720p, okay. The only thing I can think of that would make it this much better is for one software, but also they must just have a totally different lens system on it. But like how? It's the same size, Dell. What are you doing? How is this one so much better than the one on the XPS 15? I actually do not know. I'm kind of flabbergasted how much better this is. Good job, Dell. <laughs> one of the microphones better as well. It's really good, honestly. Is it 1080p? Okay, so very usable. I kind of assumed that it would just have the exact same sensor at... Sounds like the same microphone, but it does a perfectly fine job. Did we mention that this screen's touchscreen? It's touchscreen. I, I do really like this display. I know that I talked about the latency for a bit, but like, if you're not gaming, it's really good. It's fine to look at. Oh, we could run a Cinebench. I really like how Dell Optimizer goes over top of everything else <laughs> and takes forever to launch, that's my biggest problem. So Dell has some really great software on the XPS 15 for like your color profiles, your battery profiles, fan profiles, all that stuff. It takes forever to launch, so I just don't use it. It's still opening. <laughs> the problem is I can't hit okay to like save Cinebench. Delloptimizer.ui is not responding. Gotta get the short circuit speed tape. All right, let's see how we do. All those 20 threads. I'm gonna guess what? 12,900. If it breaks 1,300, we're happy. 12,682. That's mildly disappointing, but not bad. Service host diagnostic policy is running. I feel like that Windows update might be screwing with us a bit. One moment. While Windows installs updates, I'm gonna have a nice sip of my coffee. You can't get that mug on our store, but you can get this water bottle, ltdstore.com. 
It comes in red. This one's like Canada. All right, this is taking forever. I'm just turning it off. I'm done. Uh, you can probably get a higher Cinebench score if Windows isn't updating. It must have sucked so much to be a company like Dell where they do so much absolutely incredible engineering, but they're 100% tied to how good Microsoft is. <laughs> oh, one thing that I didn't notice before, and this is definitely why it's slightly thicker than the XPS 15. Look at the size of this foot. It's got like a full quarter pipe there. <laughs> it's massive. Oh, I would be so stoked if we can upgrade the RAM, but I can almost guarantee with those speeds you cannot. Oh wait, I didn't notice this before, but there's a smart card reader right here. That's the sort of thing where for a consumer device, you would absolutely never need it. But if you work in super high security situations like the government or mm, I, don't, I don't know, whatever, that's the sort of thing that is completely crucial. Looks like the whole thing's aluminum. All right, so for our battery, we have a 72 watt hour jobby. I imagine that depending on what you're doing, your battery life is going to vary greatly. So if you have the display pumping out all 500 nits and you have all 20 threads of your processor, I don't know, doing something, you're gonna go through that pretty fast. If you treat it nice, eight-ish, nine, 10 hours of battery life, somewhere in there probably. <laughs> we also have two nice little heat pipes that go up here. The fin density on these fans is crazy. We'll just go up here and see how many fins there are in there. They're also pretty thick boy fans. So cooling in this, given the size, I imagine is quite good. Couple more things to note in here. The SSD is replaceable, although the Wi-Fi card strangely is not. Overall though, I really like this little machine. It's the XPS 14 that I have always wanted. It has essentially the same power as the 15, a little bit slower, doesn't have the same kind of cooling, but you know, it's a little bit smaller as well. I will very happily give up the 500 Cinebench points for half a kilogram off the weight. There is one thing though, this is a professional device and professional devices come with big money. How much is it? $3,358, okay, that's uh, that's about what I was expecting, honestly. Uh, <laughs> that's a pretty terrible value if you are a person that is looking for a laptop that has these specs. You can get like the Envy 15 or the Lenovo 7i Pro for half as much, and it will give you essentially the same thing. Those also don't come with like V Pro and Dell's professional warranty crap that's really good. So yeah. If you're in a situation where you are buying a laptop, I don't think I can recommend this. But if your boss is buying a laptop and you want something that you can sort a game on and generally have a great time, this is a good buy. And this is also a good buy. Uh, until the next time I do one of these, which is probably pretty soon because we have a massive queue of laptops. Uh, hit like, get subscribed, and just have a fantastic day.